Hi, I'm Madison and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new reading vlog for you. So it is currently August 13th. It's my dad's birthday. I'm in Vegas again. Um, I'm going to be here for a while since so when my vlog is going to be based out of this time around. Um, I flew in like two nights ago. So my plan today is basically to spend it with my dad. But I do want to start a new book today. I'm starting, I don't know what the book is called. I just downloaded it on my Kindle. Put a picture up here. But it's a Smutty Bloody Mary erotica book. I don't know if it's going to be good. It's like 100 pages. So it's a novella. Um, and I don't know. I just wanted to try it for shits and giggles. And I want to vlog it specifically. Because like if it's good, great. And if it's not, well, you're also going to find that out. But I was kind of like, Bloody Mary erotica seems kind of fun so why not give it a shot um i'm gonna show you guys as well what we're doing currently for my dad's birthday we made fresh pasta we made fresh um fettuccine and then we also made fresh gnocchi and so very excited um and that's my plans at the moment so i'll catch you guys up as i start reading hopefully it ends up being a good book and if it's not well it'll be entertaining for everyone okay catch you guys up later okay so i'm only like 20 pages in at the moment but at least it's already such a good one literally 20 pages in I have very high hopes. This has gone very well so far. So we'll see. Hello. Okay. So I did just finish the Bloody Mary uh, erotica novella, which I'm calling a paranormal romance actually, because it definitely is paranormal romance set in like our real world is set in Edinburgh, Scotland. Really enjoyed it. It was definitely different than what I had expected it to be. I think because I wasn't expecting, well, I don't really know what I was expecting. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read the synopsis really going into this. So I don't want to give anything away by telling you guys what this is about because the synopsis doesn't really tell you what this is about and so it's definitely more fun just kind of go into it and be like ooh. so if you do like kind of paranormal monster smut do check it out because there's like vampires and fae and fairies and trolls and x y and z and everything and the author at the end of the book did say in her little author's note that she plans to do like a full-length novel following this couple and i'm like so here for it because it was so much fun um what I will say, giving it a four to five stars, not my favorite novella that I've read, but I do think that if this was a full length novel or there was like a full length novel following this couple, it, that would be a five stars because like the, everything is like there. It just was missing that extra oomph that I really do love. I also do think that like their first like sexy, sexy scene together, while I did really like it, um, he, they, they do it, but like they do it with like his tail, not like his his schlong and so like the the logistics of that like i had some trouble imagining it because like he has a barbed tail and like i didn't really understand like how the barbs worked you know so like there, there was some issues with, some issues with the logistics anyway he the guy who's bloody mary his name's bloody marius he's like the most powerful like one of the most powerful beings in the entire world like he's like an immortal monster um and he can like have a human form and his monster form and his monster form has like horns and he has like red eyes and he has like a barbed tail and he's actually the devil so bloody mary is the devil in this like universe uh, this like alternate world okay so i thought that was really cool and i really enjoyed learning about that this is also the same author this author is her pen name so this is actually amanda richardson who writes reverse harems and i really enjoy her reverse harem so this was a plus having read this though it made me want to read a reverse harem so i'm actually picking up an omega verse next so i found one today it's called in trouble by hannah hayes i literally just downloaded it because i saw it on instagram it popped up on like that like explore page and i was like oh, that looks cool and so it says one omega four alphas one hot mess i don't know anything else about it it's like 300 pages i'm gonna give it a shot that's that's my update i ain't got nothing else to say okay see you guys Bye. Okay, so I'm currently 10% into the book. I'm really loving it so far. Just want to come on here and say that is that I've got very, very high hopes for this. It has already made me laugh a couple of times and I'm very excited to see what's going to go. Okay, goodbye. Hello, so coming on quickly to give you guys an update. So I did finish the um, Omegaverse book. I'm giving it like a three out of five and that's me being generous to be quite honest with you. I kind of want to give it a 2.5, but I feel, I feel rude giving it less than a three because one of my main issues with this book was the way that it was written. It just felt very 
unpolished, very unedited, and I just, I wasn't a huge fan of the writing style. You know, there was just like, I, and I don't know why, because like I normally don't look at that when I'm reading a book, because like I've read ARCs, I've read, you know, Kindle books before that, you know, you can tell, you tell I've been unedited, or there's like spelling issues and typos and X, Y, and Z, but this one was a lot different, and I just, I just didn't vibe with the writing style of it. Um, it, too many exclamation points for one thing, but also I wasn't the biggest fan of this, like, Omega verse. Alphas and Omegas are both rare in this world and so Omegas and Alphas tend to be like in just strictly MF or like FF or MM, like strictly like two people relationships. So that gigantic pack dynamic is not always necessarily a part of this world, which is what I really do love. Um, and also like Alpha only packs are very, very rare. They're not something that is uh, a popular thing. And this focuses on a girl who is an Omega and she ends up, you know, doing the do with this guy one day and she steals his, you know, watch. And then the guy later on comes back and is like, I want my watch back. And she's like trying to like not give it back to him. But eventually she does. And then he says, hey, me and my pack would love to hire you to like steal something for us. And it's her kind of relationship with the guys in that pack. And, you know, obviously stealing this thing back that she needs to do. But it, yeah, like, I honestly got to like the 50% mark and I was just like not into it anymore. Like I was just getting a bit, like, I, I wasn't invested. The connections that I was hoping for from the pack dynamics didn't really arise. Also because like the guys themselves, their pack dynamic is totally different because it is a completely alpha pack, but none of the guys are with each other either. They're just like brotherly, like love. So like none of them are with each other. So it is a complete reverse harem, like in that sense. It's not polyamorous at all, but also like, they called each other Alpha and Omega, like, solely. Like, they rarely called each other by their names. And something about that I just didn't really vibe with from an Omegaverse standpoint. I like my Omegaverses to be a little more personable. I mean, honestly, it's probably, like, one of my least favorite Omegaverses that I have read, which is really disappointing because I was, I was excited by the premise of this and I thought it could be good, especially since it did start out quite promising. But then as it went on, I just became less and less invested and I just kind of was like, I just want it to be over. So that's a bit disappointing. So I think I think it is like a two out of five, but I don't want to rate it that. So I'm just going to keep it a three on Goodreads because I don't like to be a mean person. What I will say, though, is I'm about to start my next book. Bosco, come here. Come, come, come. I know. My parents just went to go pick up my brother from the airport. So my dog's like sad because he loves my mum and no one else. Don't you? Come here. Look, why don't you look at that? You don't love anyone? No. Okay, that's fine. You'll sit like that. Anyway, I wanted to pick up uh, one of my arcs because these both come out on August 23rd. It's currently the 14th. So I have like a week to read these two. And I want to read this instead because I know it's going to take me longer to get through since it is a fantasy book. Plus this one is super hyped. And I know that if I get too close to the book coming out and haven't read it yet, I'm probably not going to because I hate reading hyped books. And this is super, super, super freaking hyped. It's a YA fantasy. Um, and all it says is that like every 100 years, the Island of Light Luck appears for 100 days and it hosts a deadly game where the rulers of six realms fight to break their curses to win unparalleled power. And so we're following Isla Crown as like our main, main character and she must lie, cheat, betray, even as love complicates everything to win. So yeah, that's my current standpoint. I'm gonna read a little bit before my brother gets in and yeah, okay, catch you guys up later. Hi, okay, so my parents have had people over for dinner, so I'm very long to talk to you guys, but I am currently 100 pages in to Light Lark. I'm gonna give you guys my first thoughts on it. So I am enjoying it so far. It's a very detailed world and it's not really what I thought it was gonna be. I actually thought it was gonna be like multiple perspectives, but it's just one single perspective so far who is Isla. Um, she is the crown princess, like the heir, the ruler of Wilding. There's like six different islands, six different kingdoms. You know, they each have their own magics. And, you know, she is going to this centennial and, you know, they've never actually been able to break the curse. So every hundred years they always try and no one actually, like, you know, wins. And so far, four out of the six rulers are like hundreds and hundreds of years old because they like live until eternity and because they haven't been killed yet by this thing, like they still survive. Two of them are brand new which includes Isla and this is her first time doing the centennial and she's terrified because she's actually powerless. Her curse, the curse for her went wrong. So instead of her having the regular curse of her people, which is that they have to eat human hearts 
and that they um, will kill anyone who falls in love with them. And they're like, you know, these like seductresses. Um, she just has no power instead at all. So she's like now part of this like massive competition trying to win, but she actually has no power. And so she is teaming up with one of the, uh, the other young new ruler. And the two of them have to like devise their own plan to try and win because the other young ruler, if she doesn't win this round of the centennial and break her curse, she will die because her curse is that her people die before the age of 25. They never survive past it. And so, so two of them, there's like maybe some possible love interests. Um, I'm not really Really sure who it's gonna be it's either obviously gonna be like the grim dark ruler of nightshade or it's gonna be like the sun king which i feel like is always like you know that typical that typical trope of light versus dark who's gonna be the winner um i'm kind of banking on like the dark dude but i have a feeling it's gonna be the light dude because like we've barely seen any of him and so it would just make sense if that's who her love interest ends up being the world is definitely there for me and the characters are there but i'm just curious to see you know Will this be something that is like a five star for me or will it be just like a four star? So I'm definitely curious because it definitely has a lot of makings, especially with Isla. My only thing is, is that I am someone who doesn't love when the main character is powerless. Uh, it, it's like my whole thing. It's like, you know, when the main character is like a human and like a paranormal world, like I'm like, no, I, I want my person to have magic and power too. But that's just a personal preference of mine. And it's something that I know myself that I don't always love to read about you know she is a really great um warrior and like a like a sword wielder unless she can fight like no other person can which I do dig that I love that she's not like she's not powerless because she can fight but she has like magical gifts and so I'm very curious if it's gonna work out but um that's my quick little update for now hello okay so I'm on here to give you guys my second to last update on Lightlock. I'm 75% through it I do want to quickly address the fact that today is the day that um a lot of things have been going on, on the internet for Alex Astar. Like her Goodreads rating for this book went down from like a 4.5 star to like a two star in like 12 hours. People are like attacking this author. I don't think she's done anything wrong apart from the fact that she's just, you know, comes from a privileged family. It's kind of like the only stuff that I've seen. I've seen some people rip this book apart and I don't totally get it. The only thing I will say is I would not compare this to Akratar at all. I don't really get where the Akatar comparison comes from and I think if you go into this book expecting anything like Akatar, you will be disappointed because there's nothing about this. They're not even Fae, bruh. Like why would you- if there's if there's no Fae, it's no Bay. you don't relate it, you know? So just think of this as like its own like YA fantasy like, competition romance. Like I'm just thinking of it like as basically a fantasy romance version of The Hunger Games. It's like how I'm thinking of this in my mind, to be quite honest with you guys. I think it's just a fun, enjoyable read. Like it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's still fun. I have been really enjoying it since the 50% mark. It did take around 50% of this book for me to actually get really into it and really invest. And I think it's because it took that long for us to really kind of flesh out the characters and get to know them and grim is my favorite. I love any scene that he's in and he started to play a really large part around halfway through and like his connection with our main character Isla and he's just bae. I love him so much. He's great. I, I love me, my dark, powerful bad boys. And so, you know, he's like the, he's the ruler that no one likes, but cause he has like this dangerous power and like, he's very stereotypical. Like, you know, he's a stereotypical, like dark magic wielding, like outcast. But you know what? If it's, it's tried and true, what can I say? Um, he's also the comedic relief, which I really do appreciate. I do wish there was a bit more humor in this book. You know, it's all very serious all the time. And I'm, and I kind of, I'm like, I'm like, I want to be a lightheartedness. Um, but other than that, I think it's been fun. So it's like a solid like three to four star at the moment. I think what's going to really determine like how this goes is going to be the final plot twist because I can tell that there is going to be a final plot twist coming because you can't trust every anyone like you can't trust anyone. I have a lot of theories and I don't want to spoil anything but I have a lot of theories and so we'll see how it ends and it's going to determine like what I ultimately think of this book but like I said there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a fun YA fantasy romance. I wouldn't I don't know if I'd go so far as a fantasy romance because the romance is not developed at all like it's kind of more like flirtatiousness that is throughout this so the the romance is like a subplot okay just go into it knowing that i think a lot of people went into this thinking that the romance was like a main aspect of it and it's not it's more so about like isla and the fact that like she needs she, she's either gonna die and her entire like people are gonna die or she's gonna find a way to win so that's basically what this is about and i do like that she has been progressing over the course of this book and growing as a character and there's nothing wrong with the writing either the writing is good so 
yeah, that's where I stay at the moment, and I'll give you guys my final update tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, bye. Okay, so I'm here because I have officially finished Light Lark. Um, I just finished it a couple minutes ago, and I kind of just sat here afterwards and was just thinking a little bit about it, um, because I was correct. I, the things that I thought, I was actually when I was talking to my boss today, and she was like, oh, tell me what you think is going to happen, and I told her, I was right. I can't, like, I, I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at these things when it comes to YA books. I can kind of, like, tell. And especially, like, as some things went on, I had a feeling that there were certain things that meant things. And so I guessed a lot of it, which is fine. I don't know. I, I enjoyed <laughs> the, the romance. Can I really talk about the romance? No, not really. But like I said, she does have, like, the main love interest and like a secondary love interest you know the whole light and dark situation sun king dark king kind of whole thing um i will say that like in this last 25 percent oro who is like the sun king the king of lilac anyway he really grew on me like his character like as it sort of progressed plus there was a scene between the two of them where they had to go into a lake so they had to like strip down and i was like <laughs> what is going on here? I was like, that was delicious. And I feel like at that point I started to like him a lot more, like his character took a while for me to get into. It was a really fun and enjoyable book. A solid four out of five stars, I would say. I wouldn't, I guess not like a five star read for me, but I would recommend this book. I don't think that there's anything like inherently wrong with it. It's just, I didn't feel like a lot of the things that happened in it were very new and it was quite typical, some of the things that did happen. So it feels like a lot of, different classic high fantasy books that have come together in one so I think that if you're someone who's actually wanting to get into like fantasy this is actually a really great book because it brings together everything from all these different ones so it's not like groundbreaking but it was still a really fun read and I do think there's going to be a lot of people out there who have a fun time reading it like I still want to read the next book I'm intrigued to see where it keeps on going I ship the ship that's at the end of this book a hundred percent I like it a lot better especially because that last 25 percent a lot of things started to like kind of come together and I sat there and I was like I have a feeling this is x y and z and so my feelings towards the end of this book are very much different that's kind of it I don't really like there's not like much to go into detail about for this book especially without spoiling anything about it so I guess maybe what I'll do is I'll end the vlog here for everyone and then I'm going to do a quick like spoilery talk I guess about Light Lark now just in case there's anyone who is thinking about reading it doesn't know if they want to just to kind of get into everything so I'm going to end the vlog here for all you regular people and now I'm going to talk about Light Lark in like a spoilery way okay <laughs> um so spoilery version of Light Lark basically the way that this ends is she ends up kind of getting everyone's power so she now has the power of all the different kingdoms which is why I think maybe some people are comparing it to Akutar because you know Feyre ends up getting the powers of all the seven high lords and you know in this one Isla ends up getting the power of all six kingdoms so maybe that's the reason why which I didn't really love that that happened to her because like part of her whole secret which I didn't see coming I didn't see coming the fact that she was wildling and nightshade and that she always had nightshade magic but um I, I did, I wasn't a huge fan of her getting everyone's powers because I don't, it's not like my favorite thing to happen. Um, what I will also spoil for you guys is that she does end up more so with the Sun King than the dark, you know, magic dude Grimm because Grimm ends up kind of betraying her but not really betraying her. So what happens is throughout this book she keeps having these like dreams and it got to the point where I was kind of like, these dreams feel like memories and the way that he was kind of talking to her kind of felt like he knew her beforehand and she had no memory of him, which was correct. They had met many times previously, but he wiped her memory so she wouldn't remember. So that during this centennial to break the curse, her and Oro have to fall, her and the Sun King have to fall in love to break the curse. And so she can't still be in love with Dark Dude if she has to fall in love with the Light Dude, you know what I'm saying? And so um I knew that that was coming and so she ends up feeling totally betrayed by him and kind of falls out of love with him and there's like a whole thing that happens there I will say he kind of reminds me a lot of the Darkling a lot of the things that he does do and the way that his character kind of like shifts you know starts off kind of as like a bad guy you like oh no he's actually a good guy and then you kind of like oh he's kind of like morally gray but like a bit too bit too darker shades of gray than you would prefer you know so they they end up having a bit of a falling out as this ends and she kind of ends up more with the sun king but not like totally with him because she's like oh i don't really know about that but the one thing that i really did call was i had a feeling that her best friend celeste 
was going to, like, you know, not two-time her, um, was going to be, like, a two-faced bitch, basically, and was going to backstab her. I had a feeling that, and I said that to my boss today. Also, because the entire time the two of them are hunting down this, like, special item that's supposed to, like, help them break their curses, I was like, there's something really weird about this going on. I don't trust it. Turns out I was right, because Celeste wasn't even Celeste. She was a shapeshifter. Surprise! Okay, and it was true, because the item they were looking for didn't break their curses. It just gave Celeste the power of everyone and made her this OP bitch. Okay, so I was correct about all that. I, I mean, I didn't suspect that that's what the little thing was going to do. I didn't think it would take everyone's power, you know. But I was correct that Celeste was a liar and that she did you know, do everything badly. Because I had a feeling, I was like, Clear makes too much sense. And Clear was too easily the scapegoat as like the evil villainous character. I was like, there's no way that it actually is this. And if it is, I will be pissed. Like if it actually had been Clear, I would have given this like a three out of five stars. I would have been like, what the hell? Like that was like the most obvious. So I was really glad it wasn't that, even though I did call the fact that I had a feeling that Celeste was going to backstab her. I was glad that that did end up coming to fruition because I would have been annoyed otherwise. What else is there? So, you know, she ends up having to kill Celeste. So Celeste is dead. Um, she's she gone. And so that's how, you know, now um, Isla has Celeste's power in her as well. Like all of Celeste's power. So she's like really freaking OP right now. And it's kind of that same situation where it's you have this main character who kind of has half the story the entire time and she secretly did have power the entire time and then by the time the book ends and she gets her memories she's now like even more powerful than she begun which is fine I don't know I was I was into it but then like you know the romance I was like this is weirdly progressing very quickly because it did start to progress quite quickly towards the end and I was like I'm kind of feeling a little bit icky about it and it makes sense because like he knew who she was the entire time and was like obsessed with her and I was like ah uh. Grimm has like too much of like this super darkling vibes and I feel like they are not going to be endgame at all but you were supposed to think that they were endgame but they're not and they said she's definitely going to end up with the sun king and i'm excited for their romance because like he really did grow like th that was probably my favorite part of this actually is the fact of like how oro the sun king like grew on me over the course of this book because like i did not give any shits about him when this started and even halfway through i could not have cared less for him and then the book the last 25 percent, i was like i will lay down my entire life for this broken golden retriever yeah that's my verdict. I think it's still a really well written book. It's just, I've read a lot of these at this point and my tastes have changed. It was still a really good read. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this vlog. If you guys did enjoy this video, please like button down below if you wanna see more of me, let's go to my channel. Until next time, thanks a bunch everyone. Bye bye.